So all of this was in here. Uh, the only exception is the back piece for demonstration because we have to be out of here like right after and I got to be able to take it on and off uh, for the uh, display floor. Because you'll see that <laughs> this is like a magic trick. You'll see that the wing is, um, uh, I would say, like eight feet uh, across. Pretty good uh, size. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's not um, hotel convention friendly. <laughs> we learned that in a, at another convention in Texas. Um, and it's designed for lobby con. So like uh, the, this lobby here. And I did start thinking about this when we were <laughs> at LA Comic Con in 2019. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I had my first Gundam cosplay and you had... Uh, the Charizard. The yeah. Charizard with the automated wings. Yeah. So we had a wingscapade in the <laughs> lobby. Yeah, so uh, my name is Jordan Blaza Olsen. My handle is the girl with a great smile. And with me in this panel is my friend. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cammie. Uh, I'm known as Cammie Slice on everything. Um, and yeah. And assisting us today is my other friend, Polaris. <laughs> Her name is London, uh, so she'll be, uh, she'll be helping us also throughout the, the session. So, the title is, How to Fit Giant Cosplays in a Suitcase. We heard from one of you already that uh, they have experienced difficulties in fitting their cosplay, putting it on, and also storage. How many else, uh, how, how many of you have thought about making giant cosplays? Let's start with a thought. Okay, the thought. Okay, okay. How many of you have made a giant prop and can't figure out where you're going to store it? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, so this is, this is that. And I will start with um, something that takes longer in putting this together. And as I talk, uh, Cammie's going to help. If you have questions, just raise your hand and she'll help answer them or feel them to me. So, are you ready? The wings. The magic trick is it folds. Uh, you know those pop-up books? Uh, basically, it's the same concept. The materials I'm using are foam board because it's affordable and it's lighter and it's sturdy. So even without something in the middle, it's going to hold its shape. But to secure that, there's a Velcro flap where a wood dowel will go in. And now, it's holding its uh, shape. Another wood dowel trick, connectors. Um, so you've used the round wood dowels, I'm sure. So by accident, because I didn't have any other wood dowels, square wood dowels will keep it from spinning once you put it on the wing panel. Yeah, this is based on the technique of pinning. For anybody who's built anything that has two heavy pieces, you need to secure it, but it doesn't have much contact surface. So you use a, a pin, you drill holes on either side, you put something in to create more contact surface to keep it strong. So she actually has a lot of strength. These, these actually, I'm not, we're not gonna have any sword fights or anything with them. <laughs> but, it's but not they, for battle. They, the, when you pin something like this, when you have something that's flexible, because there's such a, a uh, uh, small gap uh, that's actually solidly connecting the two, that pinning concept will keep it strong so if somebody does bump into those wings, we're not going to have a disaster like within five minutes of, of getting on the con floor. So, or she, yeah. Okay, so I kind of, I think I saw someone raise their hand. Were you going to ask a question? Oh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> also, I don't have my eyeglasses on, so you have better I'm, eyesight. Okay, I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention. <laughs> Okay, so uh, something that you will notice also in this wing panel, uh, there's a hole. Because I was thinking of making it um, uh, manually 
uh, collapsible for moving. But um, because I already had some pre-cut stuff, it wasn't going to work. And also, <laughs> I ran out of time. Has anybody here ever ran out of time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. What was your experience like trying to um, trying to figure out what am I going to make my cosplay? What was it like for you? So I'm the only one on my my Uh huh. And it's not done yet. I have to test like done. Okay. with um, trying to figure this out is planning. Yes. I, I'm, I'm not the best planner, uh, but sometimes when I'm having problems sleeping, my brain just cannot stop working trying to figure things out. And something with cosplayers is we're imaginative, we're creative, so if you just let your thought process go, you can come up with different things like you know, I never thought this would be possible, but out of necessity, because we started realizing we want to go to conventions outside of where we live, but also storage. So that, that's the other thing, too. Um, what other questions do you have so far while I'm putting the wings together? How about over on the end? How do you walk in that thing? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, walk? <laughs> um, so this one, there's a video. There's a video of me walking uh, slowly with it because um, because it's lighter. It's um, a foam board is crunchy material. If it cracks or breaks or folds, it doesn't bounce back like EVA foam. So you just have to be gentle with it. But you can walk. Uh, this whole cosplay weighs uh, I would say about 15 pounds compared to my first Gundam, which weighed almost 25 pounds. And it doesn't uh, fold or fit anywhere other than my closet or under my bed. Yeah, you get, you get real familiar with the cosplay sidestep, yes. side, side shuffle. When you, when you build something that's more two-dimensional, you just turn sideways and you can walk down the, the yeah. aisle. It's crab, not always convenient, but... The crab walk. <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, I thought about this because um, I don't have a handler. When I'm when I'm cosplaying, so I gotta be able to put it together myself, take mm -hmm. it on and off. Um, I still have quite a few things to learn, but I did figure out how it fits in a suitcase. I mean, just looking at it right now, I just need four more panels because even the the leg armor pieces, and I'm gonna show you in a little bit, they um, compress. So, so Cami, what have what have you learned so far in your uh, experimentation of how to make cosplays that fit in a suit? Yes, I, I I would go back to so I, I'm a Charizard cosplayer. I love cosplaying things with big wings, right? And you know that's why why we're friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so the definitely designing something uh, with the intent for it to either break apart into sections during that design or not is really important. The first time I built my very first Charizard, I had like eight foot wings. I was super excited, but I didn't think anything of it. And then I was like, I literally was like, oh, let me go to a convention. And I walked him out to my little hybrid Prius. And it was like, well, shoot, <laughs> let's get the hacksaw. And I had to literally saw them off. <laughs> so I could re and then when I got to the convention, reconnected. So, but if you do, do make something like that, like I did, don't ever be afraid to make adjustments as you need it. Sometimes one thing I've learned from her is I built stuff that doesn't fit or that doesn't quite work and she'd be like, well, maybe why don't you try cutting it here and using this connector piece and then we can cover it with this. And it's like, oh, that's a great idea, right? So don't be afraid to get advice from people because I come up with some of the most difficult ways to do stuff. A and, little. And, and she's over <laughs> here with, with foam board and reflective tape that looks amazing, you know? And so, so anyway, don't be afraid to to ask other people about things. But, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll give you the one example real quick yeah, while you're yeah, still putting going. that together. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a huge fan of Robotech, which is, I'm gonna age myself, which is my childhood uh, 
anime. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank God somebody knows what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, I did a, a whole uh, Veritech uh, ship cosplay that transforms and everything. And, uh, and we went to KatsuCon, which is in Washington. And uh -huh. this was this actually just before everything shut down. And this is the main piece that I have to carry. And this does not fit in the suitcase no matter how you put it out. Plus, it's fragile. I don't want to put it in a suitcase and stuff stuff around it that's going to bend because suitcases do move. Even if you pack them well, they get thrown around. You want that hard case suitcase. That's an important piece. Yes. It's a good investment. But it's amazing. PVC pipe becomes your best friend. It's incredibly easy to work with. It's very, uh, like to cut, you can get a little clipper that's a like, fancy one for it, or you can just use a little saw. It's really easy to work with, very light. You can heat it up so you can shape it and curve it if you need to. Very uh, easily accessible at any hardware store, right? So I find that I use that for most of my core pieces, but if you use too much of it, it starts to get heavy, so just be aware of that, but okay. Those are probably the tip, best tips that I've learned. <laughs> what about the uh, suitcase Tetris? You Does know? anyone play Tetris? <laughs> anyone ever played Tetris? I love Tetris, except, except when everything starts getting real fast. <laughs> but okay, whatever. But yeah, suitcase Tetris is, is fun because you start to learn how to use every available space. Wow, I have clothes that I also need to transport with my costume. Well, when you have boots and shoes, you can roll up your shirts, your underwear, so just stuff them right in there, right? So it's, you learn to use uh, as support and reinforcement, but also just to not forget space. Yeah. So, there's the wings. That fits in this suitcase. Yes, come on! <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so the other thing is props. Luckily, this design uses a double barrel laser something gun. <laughs> and it's magnet. Yeah, magnets are good. Uh, neodymium magnets. And they are a pain to pull apart. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pinch your fingers. <laughs> yeah, Ow. Especially if you use the, the larger one. So yeah. for this yeah. one, I only use what was available and I had to you know, put together a couple of them because um, the, this is the other thing too is with designing cosplays that would fit in a suitcase you do have to compromise on design a little bit mm -hmm. which is if you're a perfectionist why are you looking at me? <laughs> if you're a perfectionist it's something you're just going to have to learn to work with and, and maybe create your own uh, uh, interpretation of what a perfect cosplay is is that fits in a suitcase. So, there's the gun, and then the gauntlets. This is, you, you hear this cracking sound, it's Velcro. Yeah, I love that sound. <laughs> Especially at the end of the day, get it off. Yeah, it just, just <laughs> rip it off. Velcro, um, what I use again is foam board. You know the colored craft foam in elementary school? The colored pieces are craft foam because it also saves time in painting and every layer of paint also adds, every ounce adds to it. So when I started with the wings, it was like four pounds, but after I painted and everything, then you know, it was almost 10, plus the harness and the Yeah, you don't, don't think about how much weight the paint adds, yeah. Yeah, so this is the planning part is, you really have to start thinking about it, even if you don't list it, even approximation, you can see, um, so the whole cosplay is about 15 pounds because the shoes, which I'm going to go over in a little bit, make sure I have time. Okay. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, the shoes are those uh, Frankenstein elevator shoes, like they use for yeah. raids. <laughs> They're like two and a half pounds each. <laughs> yes. Even though they're Yes. So remember that just because it weighs two and a half pounds, but you can carry it, but that's on your feet, and you're limited with movement, and the wings tilt back, and it catches wind, and then there's heat. So think about these things when you're when you're designing your uh, your cosplay. 
I, I think you touched on something really interesting just a, a moment ago that I'd, I'd like to just quickly go back. Who here has seen Iron Man 2, the second one, where he, the, the, oh. the guy with the whips, right? That when he's on the race course, right? And you remember, they, he's like, get the suitcase, right? And he has the suitcase so that he turns himself into the Iron Man suit, right? Well, that Iron Man suit is still amazing, of course. But it doesn't have all the bells and the whistles that all the other Iron Man suits have, right? And he did have to compromise in a lot of different areas to make it portable. So I think that that's a really good uh, piece when you're talking about what materials am I trying to transport. We were talking about 3D prints earlier. 3D prints are really heavy, especially oh, after you use yeah. Bondo and you, sh you sand them all down, you go through that whole process. They can be pretty, you know, pretty heavy, which if you have too much of that in a suitcase, air airports will charge you after a certain yeah. point, right? After so you, 70 pounds. Yeah, usually. so depending, yeah, depending on the on where, what you're flying. So you have to keep that in mind too. So uh, you, you might find that when I'm traveling with armor, personally, I'll just say this one piece, I try not to travel with 3D prints as much as I love them and my stuff is beautiful because it's detailed. I'll sacrifice and go with maybe more vac-formed plastic because it's light, it's still sturdy. Um, of course, I can't do that in my home, so that means I have to pay more money to have somebody else that can do that for yeah. me. So, you know, you have to kind of keep all that in, in consideration. But I think that's really smart to think about, though. A good so. point is also... Materials. Yeah. When you come up with an idea, do you... How many here starts with budget? Oh, that's a part, for sure. Okay, there's a couple. And then how many <laughs> starts, here... Starts, starts. It's just start, <laughs> How many no here judgment. starts with idea of the cosplay. Uh, I have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The other is, how many here thinks about where am I going to store this? <laughs> that usually comes up after for most of us, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So we'll figure that out later. Yeah. <laughs> after, after you have, uh, what, 15 boxes of cosplay in your hallway, <laughs> then you're like, where am I going to put this? <laughs> your closet and it's like more than half of it is cosplay so which which was really interesting because uh, I had some work done in my apartment and the maintenance guy had to go to the closet and he just stood there <laughs> <laughs> like he said uh, I need to get to the to the thing I'm like okay uh, can you come back in like half an hour <laughs> so there's like with the cat, my Catwoman costume was just right there, right in the middle, and then there's the Gundam on the closet, and there's a bunch of wigs. So, so now we start thinking about it, especially that um, we are slowly emerging from the pandemic, and we want to go to other places. So there's this renewed excitement about not just putting it on, but making it. So with this, uh, even with the gauntlets, because the design is very square. Uh, Velcro is my friend. Hot glue gun, high temp hot glue gun. You just gotta be really careful with it because, and don't look at my tutorials because I say wear gloves, but I'm not wearing gloves. <laughs> but <laughs> wear gloves, um, unless you're, you know how to be very careful with it. And uh, a, a trick that I learned from another cosplayer with using hot glue gun and sticking things on EVA foam is doing light uh, scoring, light cuts on mm -hmm. where you're going to glue it. Rough so there's enough. more, yeah. uh, more Surface area yeah, texture yeah. for the glue to stick to. Okay. Silicone glue? No, they're like little tools. Oh, okay. Like a little, um, like little shape. Yeah, there, there's, there's lots of different options. Yeah, the, the, what, anything to create kind of more service area to give uh -huh. the glue so each better chance to bind. Down, instead of using, even if you have those options, using your fingers to push down. Ah. Like, yeah. Make good contact. Yeah, cool. see? Kind you learned something new. <laughs> yes. You also use a uh, craft stick. Yes, yes. So, yeah, Otherwise, okay. you'll, you'll lose all feeling in the tips yeah. of your fingers, yeah. and then it won't matter, <laughs> but, yeah. So then, uh, the other thing that I did um, is it, we can fold it flat because the armor part is EVA foam. It's more durable than the foam board. The foam board wings fit in one half the suitcase, flat. Because I only use acrylic paint, uh, you, you still have to layer paper in between because after a while it's going to start to stick. 
Um, so the the gauntlets are a square thing, and then the two millimeter crown foam. And I'll let you take a look at this later uh, to create kind of like a bouncing thing. I put a a, a a string of hot glue in the middle, pressed it, and then let it open. So when it dried, it created a webbing. It was by accident. <laughs> I, not, Don't tell them that. It was, it was, it was by, I'm like, oh, the, it's, it's my Google talking again? No. Mm -hmm. My Google phone like, hi, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. um, and then we were talking about uh, uh, armor pieces that doesn't fit. What did you discover this morning when you put the thing for your book of Oh, yes. Yeah, so... Uh, I, I have a gauntlet that goes on my arm, but it doesn't stay flush or tight to my arm. And so since you, know, you can try to figure out, well, how can I, you know, make Velcro attachments or other things, and then it still jiggles. Or I just got some upholstery foam and stuck it in there because that shrinks and is small. It's super easy. It fits yeah. anywhere, and I can just wrap it in that, and then that'll expand and hold it tight on me, and it, I can yeah. dance with it's it. It's cushion yeah. also. And it's cushion. Yeah. yeah. So, for so me, yeah, it works in between prop pieces to to tie. Yeah. And then um, I come from a, a, a fashion design background also, so I know uh, fabric related materials. So I thought um, I, I thought of uh, elastic, but I didn't know how to attach it. And a friend of mine said, "Oh, you just attach it to one side, whichever is supposed to stick to your body." So the design is it's supposed to stick to this side. So I did put the glue the elastic inside in the in the inside part. I don't know if you could kind of see it. It's just a loop that's glued on one part, and you put it on that part that you want to be flush to your body. Yeah. yeah so it it's not secure, like um, like it's not going to stay in place. It's going to move a little. But also, I like air to flow in between, <laughs> like yes. as much as possible. Um, so, you know, someone, someone said, um, well, why don't you make the full armor? Because I heat up. I don't want to. I don't want to heat up. So I do pieces. That's another thing with compromising with the design. But guess what? Nobody knows how it's supposed to look like unless they're super fans. And well, but also, pieces are much easier to transport than solid, large chunks. I mean, uh, right, uh, and obviously, especially when you're talking about suitcase airplane travel. It's a little different if you're driving somewhere and you just want to keep it safe, but you have lots of space. But when you're limited to two check-ins, you know, without it really, or you want to ship it and you really need to keep the weight down, the more that you can break something down into smaller components, the easier it's going to be to fit into Tetris, as you're saying. Yeah. Um, so then the headpiece. I, I don't like helmets. I can't. I get so like claustrophobic, but also I like to show a little bit of feature, facial feature. So the I just did the headpiece, and then um, again magnets. So this is a delicate piece, but uh, I can flat pack it, and then this has just little bendy stuff, headband, Velcro the earpieces come off. And then when you put it back together, again, it's not going to be solid and sturdy, but the other thing is your purpose for cosplaying. Are you gonna go into battle or do you wanna be <laughs> photographed? Yeah. Well, it looks good in a still <laughs> shot for three seconds where you don't have to move. Yeah. Cause I like to uh. be photographed in video, but my main thing is I like I like pictures. I want to be photographed. I want, I want kids to look at and go, oh wow. And sometimes the parents, you know, are like, oh, I remember when I was a kid, you know. So, and then it just rests on the head. Okay. Uh, yeah. Another trick that around the head pieces like this, because again, inspired me seeing all these builds, and I was like, oh, um, with my Charizard, I tried it. I have horns that come off, and sometimes headbands don't always fit with certain wigs, right? Because that, and that's a whole other piece we can talk about transporting yeah, wigs. Yeah, this one is flipping. <laughs> I can um, feel it. But yeah, so and what you can do is you can glue magnets to the bot, like a piece of spare foam, craft foam, and you slide that under the wig, 
and then you glue a magnet to something else and it just sticks right on. So you don't have to worry about the headband. It's super secure. It's not going anywhere. Um, and then it just pops right off. Or if it does get knocked off, it's not going to take your head with it. So. Yeah. Okay, so that's... But, but, but consult with your physician if you get headaches because of <laughs> magnets. I didn't tell no, you to do that. about so, yeah. that. So, <laughs> might be sensitive to electromagnetic something. Yeah, something. Yeah. All right, the shoes. So, these are also different pull-apart pieces. Again, more Velcro and the springy something that I figured out and then tap, tap. So, um, time check. 24, 12, 24. Good. Questions. What questions do you have before I let you come up and look at my magical work? Questions. Uh, you and then you. Okay. So on the magnets that you're using for large items, what do you think is the minimum full strength to be able to handle something and walk around without it just flopping off on you? Yeah, that, that, that's, no, that, that's a really good question um, because, yeah, certain magnets need to have more hold, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's, duh. <laughs> um, the, uh, it depends a lot on what you're doing. Uh, I, I, that, that really, to be stated, there's a lot of options. Um, I find that if I build my prop so that the base piece, like, for example, with this gun, right? It, just the base piece that I'm holding is going to be uh, uh, out of material, whatever. I want that second piece to be lighter, but magnets magnets are tricky when you get length. Right, that's why I'm like just moving it and, and yeah. light it. Now with this gun, she's not here spinning it and moving it. It'll fly off uh, eventually. Oh, yes. So yeah, again, yeah, yeah. posing individually. Oh, you want it with the guns apart? I can pull them apart. I can do a pose. I can put it together and you're holding it with, she's holding it with two hands. So, um, so it's good. It's a difference if you want it to be able to swing, or if you want it to just simply connect for ease. So it's it's kind of hard to answer that. I'm I'm a fan of the bigger magnet, the better always. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, you can never go wrong in my opinion. With and that. those, the, it would say in the packaging the strength of it, but uh, again the purpose of what you're creating. Is that good? Okay, thank you. Me message us if you have a specific. If you have a specific need, I can be specific yeah, yeah. with you. Yes. Yes. Great question. Yeah. yeah. So there's two harnesses here. The first one is the PVC with the, um, it's a curved PVC pipe, which you cannot find in the, plumbing department, but you can find in the electrical department. So there's different PVCs. Uh, and it's designed for uh, display for solid and heavy cosplays. And it's just a T in the back with a two here. And I came up with that from when I used to compete in pageants. And I used to make the 10, 15 foot wings because I want to block all the competition. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> you think she's kidding. You think she's uh, kidding. Um, uh, because I learned that it held like fabric and feathers and rhinestones. For this, I realized that I don't need to make that kind of sturdy harness. So then I thought of the just simple backpack stuff. I've seen, um, who else did that? Stella Chu. Stella Chu has a tutorial when she did one of her cosplays and she did a simple backpack, backpack style with the, uh, the clip-ons. Um, but because of the wing design, it's supposed to spread out and back a little. So when you look later, the, it's, it's stacked with certain wood dowel slots at an angle. But yeah, it's a it's a backpack style. So that's what I use for travel. Yes. Um, so with large cosplays, do you, have, do you have a handler or what if you don't have a handler? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah. something that I learned with something that I learned with cosplays is friends will help you. Yeah. Strangers will help you. Uh, so it's up to you how well you trust them and how well you can explain to them what kind of help you need on the spot. 
luckily for me, this has, every time I've worn this, um, she's been able to help me, yeah. and now um, uh, London's going to be help, able to help me also. I was in San Diego Comic Con last week, and my photographer friends were there, and they helped me because they want to take a picture of it. So, if you, so you have to think about that too. Who's going to be with you when you put it on, and when you have to take yeah. it off, and when you're on the floor? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I, my first Charizard, I met the one that didn't fit in my car and I had to make, I made that very purposefully knowing that nobody was going to be able to help me. Um, and it, but it, it was limited because of that, that, you know, and I, so I didn't want the limits anymore. So I made a second version with like automated stuff and that's what we were, the, the thing last year. But I need help with that one. So mm -hmm. if I'm going alone somewhere, I, I have to think, can, I can't really wear that unless I want to tell somebody, explain to them how to specifically connect the electronics that yeah. need to be done in the back, which I'm not about to trust anybody else <laughs> to do. So, yeah. you know, you have to take that into account for sure. But yeah, I've never had anybody not be willing to help me if I needed it at yeah. a convention. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, slowly take this down to the floor so you can look at this different stuff and then we'll do a more conversational uh, here we go you got it <laughs> yes like she's done it before <laughs> okay and I'm not sure if that's going to work so I'm not, I have these so I also had to compromise, uh, not compromise, but change the design, the proportion of my Gundam wing, which is on display in my, at our booth. Uh, what is it? 356. Um, so I kind of like shrunk it down a little and chopped up the leg armor. That's why I don't have thigh covers, because I just want to show shoes, the armor, and then the wings. And then this is similar. Velcro, 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 and it folds. The different extension pieces are also Velcro. And I um, lights. I can do, I can do LED, but um, it's easier to do. It's a fairy light. Oh, Jeep lights, very lights, which is important. I mean, no pun intended. They're lights, but, but they're, they don't weigh a lot. You don't have. Yeah. You're not going to have a lot of problems with that mid show because you didn't have to wire anything or solder yeah. anything. Yeah. Creator friendly. Yeah. yeah, creator friendly. And then let me turn this off for. Um, Ta -da! So that's the thing that you're gonna have to also think about it. How you, uh, well, what's system. heavy, what's gonna, it was under here. And this is the, um, what do you call this? Oh, oh, the closet lights. Yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah the closet lights, so diffusers. So different diffusers that you can use are uh, cellophane or even Wax paper, uh, packing it's, foam. That's what is it? Thin packing foam. Oh, yes, yeah. So, yeah. Get it all your Amazon so that's what I'm using here stuff. is that packing foam. Yeah. And then for the lights, it really is. And then under there. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else do we need to go over? So, one, one thing that, that, that I'll share, oh, I'm sorry, do you have a question? Please ask. Oh, yes. Sorry. I just wanted to know what do you use to seal the paint with? Uh, Mod Podge. The, the, oh, so that goes on top, not on the bottom, on, not underneath? So heat seal the foam. The best way to do that, heat, when you heat seal, uh, it, it really is just um, shrinking the opening, right? Pores. The pores. Mm -hmm. And then whatever you put on top, whether you want to go straight to paint or classy dip or Mod Podge, it's going to not get absorbed. So then I use colored craft foam, heat seal a little. Mod Podge, paint a little, and then Mod Podge on top. Okay. And then um, light detailing with uh, another acrylic. Do they scuff in transit? Say it again? Do they scuff while you're traveling? Uh, so, so far, the problem is when it sticks to each other. Oh. Because it's acrylic paint. Hmm. 
But we call it battle damage. <laughs> we call it battle damage. So the way the way it's painted, it's not um, it's not really smooth and clear like how I did my Gundam wing, for example. Uh, this one I wanted a different look, more kind of like a, a you know two D animation, and it works. Also because. Uh, on the other side of this, uh, the shoulder pieces, I made a major mistake of um, when I was working on it. So I just flipped it over. I'm like, oh, the color, the, the, the design works. I'm just going to keep doing it. <laughs> and then that's what happened. Hi, so I'm the girl with the great smile, and if you want to learn more how to make giant cosplays that fit in a suitcase, check out my Instagram, the girl with the great smile, or visit me on TikTok, uh, TikTok yeah, and Twitter. Hi, if you enjoyed what we had to say and you want to learn more from us, you can check me out at Cami Slice, C-A-M-I-S-L-Y-C-E, on all platforms, and I'm happy to help you out.